832, we want to uh, welcome to the program here uh, this morning our our guests from uh, TV, movies, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and, and a new movie coming up. Dean Kane, welcome. Ron, thank you so much. Happy to be here. Yeah, where, where in the world are you this morning? I'm in Malibu, California, my friend, uh, at home. Uh, Malibu, yeah. That, how's, how's fall so far been down there? Uh, lighten up a little bit on the temps and so forth? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it goes from... Uh, Summer, you know, gets up to almost, you know, the, I'm at the beach, so we're, you know, we get about 80 degrees. It doesn't get so hot out here. And then when fall comes around, it gets down to about, oh, whopping 70. So so it's really lovely. Not the bad. weather here is the greatest I've ever seen. We're lucky to live in California, my friend. How long have you lived there? I've lived uh, in Malibu since I was five years old. Really? Okay. So I saw uh, something this morning, and I was going to bring it up as a topic, talking about people who grow up next to a beach are more... Uh, well adjusted and things are easier and, and calmer in life. And I grew up right across the street from the ocean, but I'm up here in uh, the northern end of the state. Uh, still live about a mile from the ocean. So I'm just kind of curious. Do you feel like your 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 personality, your soul is in that kind of easygoing mode? A hundred percent, my friend. Uh, really, it, uh, honest truth. I never realized it until I went away to, to college in New Jersey, in central New Jersey. I was like, wait a minute, <clears throat> what's going on here? It's a different thing. It's a different place. I don't have that ocean and that that it kind of brings you home. And for me, it feels like home. And um, when I look out, all I see is the ocean uh, and I, it's extremely calming and lovely. And I know I'm blessed to be able to live where I live. Oh, that's awesome. I was looking at your bio. I didn't realize that you were once on your way to becoming an NFL football player, but you had an injury. Uh, were you actually you were actually uh, drafted onto the Bills? Is that right? I went as a free agent after the draft, but okay. uh, they only took three free agents that year. So that was a I had a real good shot to make the the squad. And uh, unfortunately, like a lot of young athletes, I got injured. Um, but I'm forever grateful to the Buffalo Bills for bringing me in there. <clears throat> I, if I'd have played five years, I would have seen four Super Bowls. So that would have been a great time to be there and stay healthy. But uh, I have a I have great respect and a great allegiance to Buffalo, and they look really good this year. I think this might be the year where we can finally, finally bring home a Super Bowl. So if you get into like a Super Bowl position there, they they do, do you have any kind of pull, whether because you were once almost on the team or because, uh, you know. You I was on the favorite. team. All right, so you're on there. Do you get any kind of pull maybe if you got to get tickets if they make it to the Super Bowl? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, I've got some. I've got a little bit of, a little bit of pull. I got a little something. Um, there, there's no question about it. You know, once you're any NFL alum has some pull. Okay. I, I just didn't know how deep that, uh, you know, that pool went because, you know, after a while, there's quite a few people that are standing back that have been on the team at one time or another. So, <laughs> so. it's true. It's true. Uh, but I have a lot of friends still within a lot of different organizations and my friends have all turned to coaching or <laughs> being general managers or presidents of organizations because I'm of that age. So, uh, I have a lot of different avenues um, uh, to reach out to. And Buffalo has been so wonderful to me. So uh, that organization and, and the people within. So, so I, I might, I might be able to get there. I, I don't know. You know, it's great to go to a Super Bowl. It's just a crazy wild atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, it's also, and I've seen two or three, three or three or four Super Bowls. I can't even remember how many I've been to, but I've been fortunate enough and blessed to be able to go and see a bunch of them. But it's tough to beat that at-home experience, too, man. You get the replays, you get everything, you can see so much, and you're at home. So I'd be torn, although my mom just asked me, because they live in Las Vegas now, um, I guess 2024 the Super Bowl will be in uh, in Vegas, and she's like, do you have any pull? <laughs> so here's the second time in two days. There you go. Okay, well, mom's going to win out. you got to take care of mom. You can take, mom you, you, will win out. Yeah, you no can doubt. stay home on, on future ones, but if she wants to be there, you got to take her there. Well, if you had continued <laughs> to play, we wouldn't be talking today because uh, obviously the acting role, the writing, and everything else that you've done in life has put you here with us today to talk about this new movie. It's called Paul's Promise. This is a story about a guy uh, that actually happened. Is that correct? A true life story? Yeah, real true story. Can you, in a quick nutshell, tell us what this is about, Paul's Promise? It takes place in the 60s, 1960s, during the Civil Rights Movement, and it deals with um, a guy named Paul Holderfield, who is a, he's a bigoted, racist guy um, who's a firefighter, and he ended up, through this confluence of events, he turns his life around, um, and he ends up founding one of the first integrated churches uh, in, the, in the South of America. But the story really is about... Um, it's. I say it's an anti-racism film. 
which races a lot in the in the news and people are talking about it a lot right now. But you know, no one is born racist. It's something you have to learn or be taught. You know, there, and, and so it can be unlearned as well. And it, growing up, Paul's best friend, um, little white Paul's best friend, was black Jimmy Lipkin and best friends and and um, it, you know society and Paul's father sort of put a stop to that and don't allow them to be friends because a black kid and a white kid can't be friends. And they, they, they sort of drive this, the wedge between that and, and through a, a life goes on and eventually um, Paul and Jimmy encounter each other again. And uh, Paul acts like he doesn't know him because his friends and other firefighters are around. And he's like, you know, you know, this guy, he's like, no, I don't know. I mean, he doesn't know me. Um, eventually uh, through Paul's mother asking him to promise that she'll go, that he'll go to the church. She's dying. And she's very ill. And she says, you know, if you'll go to church and say this prayer, the, this prayer chain for me, a prayer for these, these, my prayer list here, um, that, that would be the one thing I really need you to do before I go. And uh, he does, and it ends up changing his life. And he becomes someone who, who serves others for the rest of his life and created an organization that serves people to this day. Uh, so it's a really wonderful, outstanding legacy. And like I said, it's a true story. So uh, it has a lot more weight to it. You got to feel good to make movies like that. It really does because you're sending a positive message and it's cliche, cliche to say it, but like if it changes one person's life or 10 people's lives and allows them to, to hear the message and, and it really does something to change their life. It's, it's, it's an amazing accomplishment and, and that you have that ability um, in filmmaking to, to make people reassess their lives or their actions or their feelings about something and you can educate them. And um, it's a, it's a wonderfully powerful um, outlet and it's wonderful when you can do it uh, in a positive way. And, and so it has a positive effect on people. Paul's promise. It comes out in, uh, in the theaters this Friday. And if it doesn't happen around here, they will be releasing it with uh, home entertainment release coming up in December. So got to look forward to that. Uh, Linda Pearl's in that Nancy Stafford, Ryan O'Quinn, uh, Sherry Rigby, Joseph Cannon, and of course, Dean Kane. Dean, I could talk to you for a whole lot longer, but I think others are waiting in line. You got to make sure you get your mom to the Super Bowl this year, all right? <laughs> oh, no, no, next year, next year. Oh, next year, okay. Yeah. Right. That way it's, it's in Las Vegas, my friend. Thank you, Roland. Really nice speaking with you. All right, same here. Thanks. <laughs> bye bye. Cheers.